Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, this week's guest is someone whose approach to cooking and food I've admired for a really long time. From his hugely popular restaurant to his TV shows and his books, his focus is all about healthy and wholesome recipes for the entire family. I'm delighted to say I've also got five copies of his new Midweek Meals cookbook to give away later on in the show as well. Nevin McGuire, welcome to Real Health. Thank you so much. Who wrote that beautiful introduction? Thank you. <laughs> well, listen, it comes, you know, I've watched you for a long time. I've never, I've never met you, I don't think. And I still haven't been to your restaurant, but it's on my list when things reopen. Uh, how's life is my first question. I ask everyone that at the moment. How are things? Yeah, life is actually okay. I mean, like it, it is what it is and we just have to get through it and, and grin and hold our nerve. And um, it's a challenging time for everyone. And we're kind of lucky, Carl, because when we reopen, please God, we'll have bookings in place. We do have bookings in place. I mean, like, you know, we're a very, shall we say, busy restaurant. We had 70 staff. We took 55 back. We got to reopen a week before Christmas and we're closed, obviously. And I can't see us being open in the earliest Easter or could even be later, you know. And we, we just have to get through this. It's as simple as that. And um, we, I suppose we changed our whole business because we have 19 bedrooms. So instead of doing maybe 90 people for dinner, we, 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 when 50% less, we were doing 45, 50 people. So one sitting, three hours, we've done an awful lot of training, the COVID training for the staff. And like, you know, it's all about the team that you have. We have a very good loyal team. So things are uh, are actually, I'm enjoying it. I do my wee videos, to be honest with you, for Simply Better, for Dunn Stores, and um, I'm working um, hopefully on a new book soon. And, you know, so um, I mean, and to be at home, I suppose family time, that's important, you know, just enjoy that. Yeah, I think that's really important too. You never get that back. So it it, it could be worse. So you have to remember yourself, we're in good health. We're all together. We're, we're going to get through this. We live in a lovely, quiet rural area. We go for a walk every day, try and keep nice and healthy. He's shaking his head, he's agreeing. <laughs> and I think that's very good for your head, your head space and your mind. I think that's really important. And was the change in pace of life difficult to adapt to? So for what you do and people, you know, when people think of, of, of chefs, it's bedlam, it's full on, it's exhilarating, it's all of that. And then tie in all the other stuff that you do, presumably your pace of life was flat out. And then that changed very suddenly, very drastically. For sure. And that's a really good question because it was like a shock to the system. So come last March, we knew something was coming down the tracks when you were going to have to close. You know, that kind of broke my heart going down to tell your staff that, listen, we're going to close. We don't know when we can reopen. Everyone was a little bit scared and anxious. It's been kind of like a real roller coaster. And it's been, it's been, um, yeah, it re for me personally, because I was in Dublin maybe twice a week and I was doing lots of other things. The restaurant was one part of my work. I was doing the television, the books, doing my demos. And that kind of that all kind of came to a halt. And it made me reflect a lot. But I'll tell you what happened really interesting two weeks before, no, a week before we closed. I just put something up on, on uh, social media if anyone would like help with recipes or guidance. I got 400 emails in 24 hours. I've never got that in my life, ever, ever, ever. It was phenomenal. And they were given out to me in the restaurant because I put in the email address for the restaurant. So they were saying, oh my God, what have you put on social media? So I knew something, I knew people wanted help, guidance, maybe a little bit of encouragement and just inspiration. Maybe that's the word, Carl, because when you think of it now, our lives, what's the main event of the day for most people is what they're eating, what's for dinner. So that's really, really important for people at home and enjoying, enjoying their food, I think so. And of course, you know, people have really got into cooking over the course of the, the lockdowns and over the course of the last kind of 12 months. Well, that's, that's one very positive thing that I've seen since this all kicked off. People are reconnecting with food and cooking from scratch. And you know you're into health, you're into fitness, you're into good, healthy food. It, 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 it all ties in uh, together beautifully. When you cook something from scratch, you know what goes into it. You can control it. And people do have time now and they're enjoying it. And I think that's very important for people to reconnect with food. And getting your children, like our twins, they're nine now, you know, in a few weeks, Connor and Lucia, and they're enjoying cooking, but they've always enjoyed eating and eating together as a family. So I have, I've had more time with them and Imelda. So I'm definitely enjoying that part, to be honest with you, Carol. And it's it's something made me to, re I suppose, reflect. I What I can do at home now is, is invaluable to me. I can do my little demos, do my little kind of videos. So I can do an awful lot from home, which is great. So I've learned a lot how I can manage my life a little bit better through this to be true food chain. And of course you've revisited your youth a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you're sick of talking about this, but I have to bring it up because it'd be rude not to. 
So if people haven't heard of this yet, you used to DJ in a nightclub uh, when you worked in kitchens when you were younger and you decided to, uh, to, to, to refurbish your decks and you now DJ to yourself at the back of the house of an evening. <laughs> yeah, I kind of uh, got to feel like a bit of a teenager again. I'll tell you how it all happened, Carl. When I was young, training to be a chef, um, I, I, I just always loved dance music and it was something that really really connected with me. I used to go up to Dublin to Temple Bar to Power Music and Abbey Disc every two weeks. I spent all my wages when I was a young chef on cookbooks and on records. And then for my 21st birthday, my parents, um, they got me a Technics decks, <clears throat> uh, 2010s and a really, really good and a good mixer and all. So um, that's where it all started. And then about life got busy. I was too busy to, I always enjoyed the music, but too busy to play the decks. And Imelda, my wife, she got them maybe a month before Christmas uh, into a local man who fixes things. And he got them revamped, new needles, new leads, new mixer. So yeah, I'm like a child in a sweet shop in Carnival. About 2000 records. I'm not lying to you. I didn't know I had half of it. Well, I knew I had a lot and they were all stored up in the attic. So it's, I'm having a lot of fun going through them. Bring back great memories. There's a lot of records I play now and I think, how did I buy that? Oh, such rubbish. It could be hardcore techno or drum and bass or something like that. But for me, I get lost in music and I could go out there and spend two or three hours. And the most important thing now is I, I have time to do that. I, I really do. I have lots of time that I didn't have a year ago. And I suppose, Carl, for the first lockdown, I kind of thought, Will I do this? I'd love to get the decks revamped, have a bit of time. And then Amel, the fair play to her, got them sorted at Christmas. Christmas Eve, I swear to God, when I saw them there, just out in the studio, uh, it, it, I couldn't believe the reaction. People said, because I never spoke about it before. I never talked about it before. People said, Genie, where did this go? And I know I used to go in DJing, but I never got paid. I got in free. I played for the last hour, all dance music. And it's not everyone's cup of tea, but for me, I, I, I just love it. So I do. And I have some, I'm still going through them. I haven't went through all the records yet, but I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun. And I'm going to tee this one, up, this one up as your question to win one of your five books that we're going to give away. What's your favourite or do you have a favourite song to play? Well, probably my one of my favourite ones was the first record I ever bought, Felix, Don't You Want My Love. And I oh my it God. In, I, bought it, I, bought it, I bought it in Power Music in Dublin. And uh, it was my first record. It cost, I think, six, six punts, seven punts, whatever it was. And I suppose that brings back great memories to me. So it does, yeah. So, so it has to be that, I think. So. I can hear that song playing around my head as you mentioned it already. I, know. I, I used to listen to it when I was a lot younger. Um, okay, let's put it towards, I suppose, people now. Look, the whole idea for getting you on, uh, A, is to catch up and have a chat, but B, is also around tips for people who are listening in around, obviously, food, around cooking. And I'm going to start with that real SOS approach, which are the basics. So people are listening in and they're afraid to cook. What are the key essentials to have in your kitchen, first of all, before you do anything? What's, what, what are the necessary must-haves? Okay, well, I'll tell you the questions that people ask me, and I've learned this throughout the years, even at Cookery Demos, and that, you know, what pots, pans, and knives do you use? And people always want a really nice pot, a really nice knife, you know, a nice frying pan. And I suppose when I opened up the cookery school, Carl, I opened it up about five years ago, and uh, I listened to people, I listened to how they were cooking, the interest in food. When, when I went to open up the cookery school, it was food that people could cook at home. It wasn't chefy food. It wasn't restaurant food. It was real food that they could cook and maybe, maybe uh, cook in batches and freeze. Um, people had an interest. And I, I've definitely seen a huge change in the Irish palate, in their attitude towards food. And they've become very sophisticated and knowledgeable about ingredients. It's more accessible now. So first of all, seasonality. What's in season? When you buy something in season, you're going to save money. You're going to get the best flavor, the best taste. And it's a win-win for you and the producer. That's what good food is all about. On my food shows, when I go to Italy or, Fra or um, Spain or that, they eat very seasonally and they eat a huge amount of fish. And at the minute, like my seafood trail, so that was recorded last year, and we're an island, we're getting better at eating fish, but there definitely is people that don't like fish or get nervous cooking it. So keep it very, very simple is what I say to people. Get the basics right, you know, whether it's making a very, very simple stew or maybe a mince or like I'm talking about family food because when I cook at home, Carl, it's very simple. It's food that you can make in bulk and you can freeze it. And like, I suppose we've never eaten as well, but it's very simple food. It's not fine dining that we're eating in any way. I don't mean that. And it, it's given people the confidence. That's that's the key. So equipment and then food and then how you shop. It's the whole journey. 
where the food comes from because we're, we we want to support Irish producers. We want to use what's in season, but people don't realise nowadays food is imported all over the world. You know, it's too easy to get things out of season that have no flavour. For example, strawberries at the minute, they're from Morocco or Egypt. They haven't got the flavour of Pat Clark strawberries that are growing and hand-picked and they're in season from May until October. And when you taste these strawberries, the best strawberries in the world, for my, for in in my humble opinion. But um, so I think educating people about about seasonality and where food comes from, there definitely is an appetite part in the pun for that. But if you start off with the with with, with the really good um, kind of like pots, pans, knives, you know, and that's why I decided to bring out my own cookware for Dunn stores that I've been I've been working with them for six years. So I've learned an awful lot from visiting food producers. I, I, I see the way it's simply better look after them. They're paid every four weeks. That's so important. And I think that's a really important message. These are small producers that you have to have to bring along the journey. And when they get into retail, they're nervous about it. And I, I think that's I think that's very important that people it's a story behind the food producers. There's great. I've met some fabulous people who, like yourself, are passionate about what they do. I think that's so important. And a good set of knives are crucial. I was chatting to the Happy Pairs about this a couple of weeks ago. We were, knives came up in the conversation randomly. But you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna make some food, if you're gonna improve your kitchen skills, having a really good set of knives and a sharp set of knives is really really important. Yeah, and looking after them and getting a good knife sharpener. And I mean, like how you store your knives. I mean, like a knife is like an extension of your arm. So I'm left-handed, and when people see me chopping, it probably looks a bit, a bit, a bit odd. Uh, but you like, I mean, like good knives are invaluable. My my knives are made with Japanese steel. They're high forged Japanese steel. They're a one piece uh, steel, so they are, which is so they're not they're not two pieces stuck together. They're one solid piece. But it's got to feel comfortable. People get nervous using a big knife for chopping whereas some people i know for this from the cookery school use the little paring knife that's what they were used to it doesn't mean as a chef i don't cut myself or burn myself you lose concentration for a second and that can happen but i think you got to be comfortable with what you're using and i think i've definitely it's been a runaway success carl if you don't mind me saying that the cookware and i listen to what people are looking for you know um, and what they want so what i always say pots pans knives how to cook the perfect steak People get so nervous. And when we go back to cooking fish, they get nervous cooking fish. So they're all little tips that people love because they have time to cook at home. They're enjoying it. And that's really, really special for me. That's what it's all about. Enjoying it with your family, friends, whoever you're with, you know, and just to cook good, nourishing, fresh, wholesome food from scratch, I think. Okay, so setting yourself up for success in terms of pots, pans, knives and stuff like that. Seasonality is another really important thing. Yeah. Is there anything that mistakes in terms of, I know I do it all the time, I burn stuff, I'm, I'm terrible for doing that. Are there mistakes that people make when they are cooking or maybe taking uh, on recipes that are too complicated or, you know? You don't burn anything, you caramelize it. It's more respectful. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, listen, don't be too hard on yourself. I mean, like, I think people... People, you know, okay, so when you're cooking something, it's like, say if you're cooking a breast of chicken or else if you're cooking a steak, take it out of the fridge 20 minutes before you're going to cook it. You relax. It's a muscle. So when it comes out of the fridge, it's firm and it's all tight. you got to relax it. You're going to get a more succulent piece of meat. And the same with fish. And then what you do is what I like, uh, you asked me a good question about, you know, the key ingredients, like a nice Irish rapeseed oil is beautiful. Is it as good as olive oil? No, it's different. And I learned something last year in Spain that there's over 600 different types of olives growing in, in, in Spain. I didn't even know there were 600 types uh, of olives. So um, Irish rapeseed oil is a lovely oil. Uh, the one we use is from Derry Karma. They're in County Loud and they grow it, they press it. it. It's a very natural oil and it's a very healthy oil and it's a good oil for a high smoke temperature, Carl. So when you're cooking chicken or steak or even fish, a little bit of oil, a little teaspoonful of butter, because I think butter is a natural ingredient. And, you know, you'd know as much as I would about dietitian, about, about nutrition and all that. I think natural fats are very, very important in your diet and butter. We have the best butter in the world. And people slag me off. Oh, there he goes again with the butter. I remember going into a butcher shop in Cork and this woman grabs me by the two cheeks here, not down there in my arse. <laughs> and he says, Nevin Maguire, you're using too much butter on TV. Her husband was given out. But I love the flavour of Irish butter. And if you use everything in moderation with the rapeseed oil, because butter doesn't have a high cooking temperature, it burns. So the rapeseed oil will stop that. But the butter will give the most beautiful, gorgeous flavour because it's grass fed. It's, it, it, it's the cows that are feeding the grass that give us the most wonderful dairy. So I think, you know, that kind of thing, like, you know, you, you, your, your, your healthy fats like that, I think are important and a really good oil, really good sea salt. 
Carl, for my, when I started cooking, I'm 46 now, I've seen huge changes in Irish food, you know, to be able to produce our own sea salt in Ireland, our own oil. And there's nothing as good as a beautiful olive oil. Don't get me wrong. But it's nice to support an Irish producer who's producing rapeseed oil. And for me, that picks all the boxes. It's delicious. It's not too strong. It's perfect for cucumber. Is it as good as olive oil? No, it's totally separate and, and totally different. Uh, olive oil is, is unique. So I think people, it's about educating because I'm learning all the time when I go and visit producers and suppliers. That's what I love about food, you know, and, you know, just a good nonstick pan or a good nonstick wok. I think that's that's invaluable for people. And you've got to look after it. Like if you're going to spend 50 euro on a good pot or pan, you've got to look after it. Don't be using a wire scrub or anything on it. Just soapy water, a soft sponge. And that's it. If you look after it, you'll have it a long time. I think that's really important too when you get good nights too. And is there a difference in terms, I think it's a, it's a really interesting point in terms of cookware, in terms of the spend. So a 20 euro pot versus a 50 euro pot to the, to most people they'll wonder is and what are the differences between the two? You know, another really good question. I mean, like when we were developing the cookware, so this is a three year project that we were working on. I tested everything and tri ply. It's three layers of steel, Japanese steel. So it's two outer layers of stainless steel, one aluminium because aluminium is the best conductor of heat but it's totally sealed in with the two layers of stainless steel. So a uh, tri-ply is a really durable, heavy, yeah, heavy, but but a really good, quick way of cooking on induction, on electric, on gas. And like I use all those formats, Carl, like at home I have induction, in my studio I have gas, down in the restaurant we have gas. So we tested all the products. So something's got to feel nice and heavy and durable because um, if you're going to pay 50 euro, it's a lot of money. You don't want to be replaced. You know, that that should last you a minimum of 10, 20 years, in my opinion. Genuinely, if you look after it, a, a piece like that should definitely. So we've tested all the products and I thought that was a really interesting interesting journey for me as a chef to test it in the kitchen, but in the cookery school, you know, and the feedback, I'd be listening to students. Did you like it? How did you find it? Okay, the lid for the skillet pan is my number one seller, Carl, and it goes into the oven at uh, up to 200 degrees, but it's a tempered glass, so it won't crack. It won't fracture. It won't. So that's something I learned, you know. So when, when it has a little hole in it, it's tempered, but mine don't. So they go in at 200 degrees. And like I'd make a stew or risotto and um, I'd make um, curry in it, you know. So it's it's my number one seller. So I wanted that to be right. I wanted it to be a good size. And then we bought in a little mini skillet because a man came up to me at a cookery demo and he said, you know, you should think about people cooking on their own. And I said, OK, I hear you. That's good. Yeah, that's good. So let's bring out something. And it, it's doing so so well so Japanese steel good quality steel but it's got to work more people are going on induction I don't know what you cook it at home I use electric and, and, and gas and induction. yeah we, 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 we have electric it's, and it's fantastic yeah, yeah it's, so it's, do it's I. superb you know and um, in terms of people listening in who are you know motivated now so let's start some cooking give us a couple of really simple meals in terms of to start with that we, that we go to start with well there's one in the new book and like I've wrote 16 books and this is definitely connected with people midweek meals. Um, I'll tell you, Carl, we put in a chapter, slow cookers. And um, a lot of people, I was speaking to quite a few people that said, oh, I have a slow cooker, I never use it. So we wanted to really focus on that chapter. And these are the lesser used cuts, the lamb shanks, the lamb shoulder, pork belly, chicken thighs that are good value and you cook them slowly. So it's a different way of cooking. Um, all the recipes that obviously we're going to give away some 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 books, and um, so we are, and um, that you can that you can do in a casserole pan. So you, don't worry if you don't have a slow cooker. But there's one in the book. It's a chicken chorizo rice. So it's onion and garlic cooked off, just regular long grain rice, a little bit of chorizo sausage, which is really nice. Um, and then you fry that off, and then you seal off your chicken breast. You can use skinless or you can use on the bone. I prefer the chicken breast uh, with the wing bone, it's called a supreme. So pan fry that and then put that in some stock, some spinach, some peas. It's a one pot dish, Carl, that is healthy, it's quick and it's full of flavor and you can make it ahead and it's even nicer the next day. And you can put in the likes of harissa spice, you can put in Cajun spice, so you can kind of jazz it up. But the fact that you're packing it with vegetables for your kids, that can be peas, that can be spinach, that can be lovely roasted peppers. So you're getting in as much nutrition there, chicken, rice, chorizo. It's a really quick, and it's done in about 20, 25 minutes. 
So it's not, it doesn't take an hour or two. This is not, these recipes are really quick. So we try to give people inspiration, you know, store cupboard essentials, whether it's a quick risotto or a quick, simple pan frying a fish or a fish or else a steak recipe. So I think for people at home, variety is the key, you know, because we do get a little bit bored of the same thing. Like I made a lovely curry with monkfish, you know, um, and I put chickpeas into it and vegetables, coconut milk. There's an Irish company called Thai Gold, who I think have some of the best coconut milk um, in, you can use. And it's all organic. Their, their products are fantastic. So for people cooking at home, it might cost maybe 20 cent extra card, but it's worth it. And you probably kill me when I say this. Is it low fat? No, it's 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 um, he said, why would I bring Norman is the man who owns the company? He said, why would I bring water halfway around the world? So what you do, you get a can of coconut milk, open it and put it into a bowl, put the same amount of water into it. And that's your low fat coconut milk. So I think everything in moderation, as, as we keep always saying, cooking from scratch. But that's such a lovely company who have great products. There's no MSG. There's no additives. It's a very natural, all organic. I really rate them really, really excellent. I think they're, I use them a lot. And for the book, like we broke it into different chapters. So, you know, people can cook lovely, simple, delicious food. You know, very, very simple. I think that's what it's all about. Okay, final question. Uh, 2021, what are your hopes and what are your plans? Obviously, your Instagram TV kind of cook-alongs are going to be very popular and they'll continue to be popular, I'm sure. But what else is in the pipeline? Um, it's a really good question. I just get a crystal ball there. Um, what did you... <laughs> um, listen, all, all, I suppose for me to reopen the business because we're 31 years open and to employ over 70 staff locally, it's been an amazing success. We had to cancel nearly 3,000 bookings uh, last year, I'm not a lie lying to you. It broke my heart. People were very understanding, Carol. Um, it's uh, it's been a real challenge, and for us to get back into the kitchen and do what we do, I love my job. I love the variety I have. I love cooking in the kitchen. I love meeting my guests. So for me to get reopened, whenever that is safe, whenever it is possible, whenever we're given the green light, we'll be so happy to do that and welcome our guests back. I'm working on a new book and I honestly don't know what it's going to be. We're going to finalize that in the next month. We're thinking, are we going to go the children route? Are we going to do a children's cookbook? Are we going to do a bacon book? So we have a couple of ideas in the air, up in the air, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to keep doing the, <clears throat> pardon me, the videos because I, I, I really have no other work apart from that. Doing recipes, doing that. I write for the Farmer's Journal every week and I enjoy that and um, do, do this with you. So I, I, I love that engagement. I love people. I love talking about food. And for me, that I have my wee studio, my wife does it on my phone, Amelda. So it's a great little team. And it's something, you know, we all need routine, don't we? We all need structure. Um, like I have a little gym there where I try and train. And I, I try because, you know, I think it's good for your head and your body. You know, and you, you do need that because everyone is going through the mill. I've definitely found this lockdown much harder to be through for you. And I think the decks have given me a little bit of new lease of life, <laughs> a bit of music. And I'm, I'm trying to get set up that I can do a mix and I can record it and then just put it up for people to listen to. It'll be a bit of fun too. So that's, that's, that's the suppose. Well, need, needless to say, you've got plenty going on. Your latest book, Midweek Meals, is out now. And people want to follow you on Instagram, where can they find you? Yeah, just type in Nevin Maguire and they can follow me there and they can follow me on Twitter and it's a bit of fun. And I love the engagement. People coming back to me with lots of lovely comments and recipes. And just to, I try to keep it simple, Carl. I try to keep food real and that you can make it and it's achievable and it's delicious. I think that's important. Yeah. Nevin Maguire, it's been great catching up with you today. I really appreciate that. And thank, thank you so you. much for the five books to give away. Folks, that's it for today's episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. So for the competition, very simple. The question is there, what is ne Nevin's favorite song that he plays on his decks? You'll see it on my Instagram feed. There's a post up there with competition on it. Pop the answer in there and we'll pick our five winners at random. As ever, we'll see you next week for more Real Health. Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.